Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. This tutorial we are going to be learning how to add graphics to a NAPE project. Now this would work with the native display list using Flash, but the code would be a little different, but I'm sure you'd understand how to actually change this to your own needs. So I'm going to get started to explain the code, and in the end, by the end of this tutorial, you will have learned how to make a project looking something similar to this. As you can see, you've got the graphics, terribly drawn by moi, but still. Okay, so we're going to get started by embedding resources. Now, if you're not familiar with the embed meta tag, um, there are tutorials online, and I will leave a link on how to embed certain files such as MP3s, um, PNGs, JPEGs, etc. But this basically allows you to add external files um, to your application and embed them within using. Um, AS for you, um, pure action script free. So let's get started. Um, as you can see, I'm embedding a file called circlebadguy.png, and the location of the file should also be in the source. So as you can see, I've not put um, any location here; I've just put the file name. So that means it's going to be in the same directory as this class. So as you can see, the files are in the same directory, right there. And if I were to change the directory of the circle bad guy PNG or if I were to change the directory to anything so for example let me create a new folder within here and we'll change this right now I'll call this lib uh, a typical name for file storage and we'll copy these files and we will paste them over to the lib folder oh god that didn't work out um, We'll copy them. Or we'll paste them. As you can see, now we've got the both files in the lib, which means now we can just remove them from here. Okay, and now if we want them to be in a lib folder, as you can see, we're getting an error because now we can't find these. What we would have to do is we'd have to put a two dots, then a slash, then a lib, then a slash. And this tells Flash Builder to go back a directory. This means to go back a directory. So it'll jump out of the source folder and then it'll go into the lib directory and there it will find the circle bad guy. So that's just a quick tutorial teaching you how to embed resources. And um, after this, you can see that we declare a private constant. I'm using a constant just to save a bit of memory. Um, and I call it circle bad guy raw and it's of type class. Now, um, when you are embedding a file, you must place a um, variable declaration or a constant declaration next to it, and that will be the embedded um, embedded data is basically class. And I've made it of data type class, but if you are indeed um, importing a PNG like we are, we could just change that to bitmap, and that would work. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm well. I thought it would work. But um, oh no, it can be of type string and it can be of type class. So if you're importing text data, I'm pretty sure you can just make it as a string without having to do any more code. Um, but we're gonna for the, um, this tutorial use class as the embedded data. And underneath that, you'll see another private constant, and I call this the circle bad guy bitmap, and it's obviously of type bitmap. And we make it a new circle bad guy raw, and this will convert the byte data. The, um, the byte stream or whatever that is in this class to a bitmap. So that's that's how you embed a bitmap. You declare where it is, you declare the class for it, and then you um, make a bitmap or um, a string or one out of it. Right. And then we do the same for the scared box, the little box at the bottom of the screen you see. Um, we embed that and then we make a bitmap for it. And then we have our basic. Um, we have our basic variables such as myspace, screen width and screen height and then we've got two new variables called circle bad guy image and we've got the squared box image and these are, these are starling um, data types and they are basically the equivalent to a sprite in flash but they're a more efficient sprite obviously because um, it's GPU accelerated and if we go into the on init function this is when, it, um, this is when uh, the actual thing starts 
you'll see init space, init bodies, and you'll see the add event listener again for the end of frame, which is um, called every one out of sixty, one over sixty seconds, because uh, we've got sixty frames per second. Now, when we initialize the space, we set the gravity with the vec two, and we set it to five hundred. To explain in the previous tutorial why I'm using the value, um, we make a new space. We set screen width and screen height. Um, I've explained all this in the previous tutorial. Now on init bodies, you will see that we have a lot more code than previously, and there's a reason for this um, because the image actually takes up quite a lot of lines of code, and this is because you have to mess with a few properties. So first of all, we call a circle bag image equals image dot from bitmap. Now this is a handy um, method inside the image class, and make sure this image here starts with a capital I, so it's the actual class you're calling, and then call dot from bitmap. And then you'll see it expects a bitmap and a another. It expects three parameters: um, bitmap, generate bitmaps, and scale. So we're we're going to pass in the bitmap and the generate bitmaps. And the bitmap is obviously bitmap. Generate bitmaps um, basically means: Do you want this image to contain smaller versions? And for this tutorial, we don't really care, so I just put false. Now, when you make bitmap, it's normally for. Um, if you're going to be scaling the image up and down, but we're not, so it doesn't really matter. And you can add scale if you want, but it's already preset for you, so you don't really need to do that. Um, we set the pivot y and the pivot x of an image, and this is equivalent to a registration point on a native flash image, um, native flash sprite. Um, this means um, basically the point of where the image will be rotated or where it will be scaled from, and we set this to the center of the um, circle bad guy image. So yeah. And then we actually make the circle bad guy, and it's going to be a, um, a body, uh, a new body with a dynamic body type. Uh, we're going to add a new circle with a radius of 64, which means its total size will be 128. So I've made an image, and I will include it in the tutorial, obviously. And the image was 128 by 128, so it fits the um, body perfectly. Then we set the position to the middle of the screen. Uh, we set shape materials again to material.steel, this is this enables it to bash for all squares at the bottom as you can as you've seen before. And now you'll see we're setting a new property that you've not seen before of the circle bad guy. Uh, this property is called user data. And this property allows us to add custom data to our uh, bodies. And if even if you're familiar with NAPE and you might have seen this before, in new versions of NAPE this has changed. It used to be um body.graphic, but it's changed to body.usedata.graphic now. Um, and you could technically just change this to anything you wanted and it would still work but we're going to call it graphic because it seems it, it's, it's a nice word and it explains it well of what we're actually doing so we're going to set that to circle bad guy image uh, so that will be the graphic associated with this um, circle bad guy and then we set the circle bad guy space to our space um, and then we set the circle bad guy's image um, the position of it um, to the actual bad guy's position uh, and then we add it to the screen uh, we add it to the styling screen, and then we make this. We make the floor as before, and it's going to be a body type static because it's not going to move or due to gravity. And then we do a for loop again. This is to place all of the boxes that you see at the bottom. Uh, we make a new scared box, and that will be a body dynamic body. And uh, we make a new image. Um, it'll be image dot from bitmap scared box bitmap, which we declared at the top when we embedded up here, and. Uh, we make the body. It'll be uh, body type dot dynamic. Oh wait, sorry, no. Yeah, we make an. Oh no, I changed it, didn't I? Uh, so we're gonna set the images pivot x and y again to the center. We're going to. Oh yeah, we're going to add a new polygon box to the scared box, and it'll be size 32 by 32. And the image that I made is actually 32 by 32. So again, it'll fit the scared scared box perfectly. Um, we set the scared box's position to the center of the screen and um, yeah well basically yeah we we center it to the middle of the screen and we make a big square of square box scared boxes um, then we do the same with the scared box we set the graphic to a scared box image and then we set the space to my space and then we position the scared box image appropriately again and then we add the scared box image um, there's a lot of code to go through but it's the same code for anything you will be doing so it's not that bad and then on an update world function, you will see myspace.step, which means um, 
we'll do this uh, 60 times a second because it's 1 over 60. Uh, this will increase the physics world and it will um, basically move time in the physics world and step through things. Uh, we've got myspace.livebodies, dot for each. Now this um, this will go through everybody that's actually awake or live or moving and it will call a for each function and this means for every single one of them it'll call whatever's in these parentheses. And now we've made our own function and I've called it update graphics and it'll call this function for everybody that is um, actually moving or is live or is active. And then inside this update graphics function all we do is we assign the graphics x to the body's x and the graphics y to the body's y uh, the graphics rotation to the body dot rotation um, now uh, we get the graphic by just calling body dot use data dot graphic and update graphics expects a body to be passed through so um, in the parameters don't forget to add this it expects a body and then you set obviously the image to that body's graphic and then you update the graphic now if you're in flash you would actually have to um, change the graphics rotation uh, the body's rotation because Starling uses radians um, the same way um, Nape uses radians um, but flash uses degrees now if you want to convert um, radians to degrees you would have to call um, graphic dot rotation equals math I oh, know wait um body dot rotation and I believe it's times math dot pi divided by one eighty and that would be how you convert the radians to the degrees I think uh oh no wait that'll be radians to degrees I think that'll be radians to degrees if I'm wrong um please post a comment but if if that's not it, then it would be divided by. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, so that um, concludes the tutorial, and you now know how to add graphics to the bodies in the Nate world. And hopefully, you'll get some interesting results with what you're working on. And I hope this tutorial helped you. And uh, next tutorial, I may be doing a tutorial on um, how to do certain mechanics, such as like a rope in Nape. So stay tuned for that and have a nice day.